everybody, Matthew and Quirk here from MiniWargaming.com and welcome to this episode of Kill Team Rogue Trader. That's right, we're playing Rogue Trader, the expansion to Kill Team that is now available for pre-order at your local gaming store or games workshop or online store, wherever you like to buy your games workshop products. And so we get to show you an exclusive peek into all of this so that you can see exactly what is involved. And we're going to do so not by doing a review, not today, but by filming two battle reports for you because in this game you get a double-sided mat. One side is a spaceship and the other side is a Ministorum shrine. So we're going to play a game on each side with Quirk taking the role of leading the Jellerpox Nurgle guys, Jellerpox Infected, and me taking the role of the Rogue Traders, the Star Striders. I think they're like the Elucidian Star Striders or something like that. So this first battle report will be on the spaceship with the Nurgle trying to capture some stuff from me and me trying to capture some stuff from you. Apparently I've just come back in from a spaceport or something because of the way we're deploying, as you're going to see. And then our, the game in the Mini Wargaming Vault at the link below will be the one in the Ministorum Shrine. So if you are a Vault member, you'll get to see two battle reports with Kill Team Rogue Trader today. If you're not a Vault member, you can still click that link after you watch this video. Sign up for a free seven-day trial to the Mini Wargaming Vault and get instant access to that video, plus thousands of others. You can get all the details at that link. But without further ado, let's take a look at the armies, the board, the components, and let's get playing Kill Team Rogue Trader. On this side, we have the Rogue Traders, the Star Striders, the Elucidian Star Striders, or whatever they're called. We're introducing a new element. Kill Team Rogue Trader adds the rules for commanders, and apparently there's going to be even more. The book hints that there's going to be even more commanders coming out later on. A commander is another specialist that gets added to your army, does not take the place of the leader, and does not count as one of your specialists. So you still need to have a leader, and then you can still have up to three other specialists. The commander of the Star Striders is Lucia Vane, a rogue trader. She is uh, pretty awesome. She's a stra strategist, 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 that's the word, is her specialist, which at level one, which is all I bought her for, gives her an extra command point as long as she's not shaken. So just like the leader. So I'll be getting three command points per turn, at least at the beginning. And you can actually purchase your commander at level one, two, three, or four. They also have a bunch of special rules, like uh, they can't really die in a campaign. They actually give people experience if they take them out of action, possibly, and they give experience to a specialist that takes them out of action. But we're not going to be playing a campaign with these two games. We're just going to be doing two one-off battle reports. None of that's really going to come in. So we're both just bringing level one commanders at 150 points. Next, we have three specialists, and these are special specialists in that they all have the special rule, which is escaping me now. I can't remember what it's called. Specialist retainer or yeah specialist retainer is what it's called essentially it means that they don't count towards the number of specialists that I'm allowed to have but they still take up the specialist slots for example we have a medic we've got a comm specialist and we've got a combat specialist so that's uh, Nasso Prand we've got Larsen van der Gross and Sanastasia Minst and so, and they all have their own special rules. The, the medic actually, not for being a medic, but just for being this model, at the end of the movement can heal somebody within a certain distance on a four plus to take a flesh wound off. My comm specialist here has a bubble of six inches of giving five up invulns. And then my, um, the combat specialist, if it charges or was charged, can reroll all failed hits, called so zealot, basically. Then we have all of our voidsmen, including the, uh, the, the dog, Aximilian. He's an honorary voidsman. And we have four specialists here. We've got our leader, Void's Master Nish, with his assault uh, combat shotgun or whatever it's called, which is pretty awesome. We've got a heavy with a ridiculously awesome ranged weapon, a rotor cannon, four shots, strength four, minus two AP, two damage apiece. We've got our veteran, and we've got our scout, Aximilian. And then we just have two regular voidsmen at the back who would normally be a fire team and a campaign and upgrade together. So this, the Rogue Trader team is really interesting because it is like 80% specialists. So normally you have a leader and three specialists if you want up to that many. This one right now is, that you're looking at has seven specialists plus the commander. Everybody can add a commander. So it's more that they can go up to seven specialists instead of just a normal four, which is pretty awesome. So that is the Rogue Trader Star Striders. Over here we have the Nurgle infected 
Geller Pox or Geller Pox. Is it a Geller Field or a Geller Field that goes around the ship as it goes into the warp? I want to say Geller Field. That yeah. sounds cooler. Yeah, Geller Field. <laughs> so the, the, the cool thing is, apparently, these guys got infected through the Geller Field. So it's like, that shouldn't happen or something like that. I didn't read all the lore. But yeah. Anyway, go ahead. All right. So my commander is going to be uh, Volgrar Thrice Cursed. So he's just a big guy. He's been cursed three times with three heads. And a belly flamer. And a belly flamer. Uh, abilities is going to, or sorry, the specialist is going to be strength, so he's going to have plus one strength, which really isn't going to matter against your... No, because his weapon already guys. makes him strength six, but so he'll be strength seven. Yeah. But there might be, I don't even know if there's a tactic worth using for that plus one strength one, but who knows? Not really. To our right, his left, we've got Ganasher Screamer, who's just a big old nightmare hawk, or probably Hulk, with uh, a giant cleaver for killing people. Uh, going to be my leader, Resourceful, giving me an extra command point. Which is quite helpful. On the other side, we have Big Spike, another Nightmare Hulk, who's going to be a combat, uh, probably expert fighter for an extra attack. And then in front of him, we have the Herg, who's just a zealot big guy walking around with a giant axe. After that, we have the Eye Stinger Swarm. Eye Stinger Swarm, thank you. And then some Glitchlings. So these all have a bunch of special rules. The Nightmare Hawks, all three of them, have horrific vis visage. If any one of them, one or more of them, was is in six inches of my guys, I get minus one leadership. They're all disgustingly resilient, so five up to ignore wounds. There's bionic implants on your leader, giving them six up involved. The Herg has um, has a tactic that lets him teleport, basically, and yes. some other special rules, like disgustingly resilient. But he loses disgustingly. No, no, it's the Glitchlings. The Glitchlings are, they have weapon glitch. If they're not shaken, then it's minus one to hit them. Um, sure. For shooting, yeah. And, but if there's a weapon that has damage two or higher that ignores their disgustingly resilient. And the Eye Stinger Swarm ignores flesh wounds, so it cannot be flesh wounded, but gets plus one injury. So on a three plus, it's out. Otherwise, the shot had no effect on it. And it can, it, if you're playing a campaign, the Eye Stinger Swarm does not gain experience and cannot upgrade. And that is the Jeller Pox Infected. We're going to be playing our first game on the True Hawk, which is the Rogue Trader's ship. This is really cool because this is a complete ship. Very reminiscent of Faster Than Light, if you've ever played that computer game. And the additional rules that Rogue Trader includes is all about fighting in confined spaces. There's a few of them. For example, walls obviously are impassable. They can be. They can provide cover. If you have any abilities that say, you know, if another guy's within six inches of you, they get so and so. If you're right here and the other guy's right here, you'd have to measure that six inches around the wall and not just through the wall. And you can open doors by ending your movement next to them, as long as there's not an enemy on the other side within an inch of it. If there is, you roll off. Whoever wins decides if it opens or closes. And um, there's actually a tactic, though, if you're against, if you're up against one of these comms, you can spend a uh, command point and basically open any door, as long as there's nobody right next to it. Unless you're a comm specialist, like my one guy, Larson, and then you can open D3, open or close D3 doors. You can't destroy doors, though, like in Zone Mortalis. Other than that, we're going to be rolling for the kill zone effect. We're going to reroll ones so that we don't have a nothing effect. And we will be playing the heist mission. So this mission is the first matched play mission that is filmed on here, or sorry, that is played on the True Hawk. Uh, I should point out there's narrative missions in here, there's open play missions, and there's even a little historical campaign you can play at the end. But we're not going to do that campaign. We might do that later on. But today it's just about playing a couple match play ones. This one requires 150 points with the commander. I've got 145. Uh, it turns out that the entire Rogue Trader team that comes with it, if you have a level one commander, is 145 points. So I just had to bring everything. Whereas Quirk had to choose from a lot of other guys. He had he had another Nightmare Hulk, he had a lot of other little guys. So he could go big or go swarm. Those were his options there. Maybe we'll see a change up in the second game. We'll see. And uh, 150 points on his side though. And we are going to be setting up four objectives. You can see the deployment being like this. The four objectives will be crates. Whoever controls the most of them wins. They're three victory points each, but really there's no other way to get victory points. So it's whoever has the most of them wins. However, you can drag them with infantry. If an infantry model starts next to one, it can only move six inches if it wants to drag it. But after it moves, then let's see. It can move no more than six inches, but after it moves, you can move the crate also six inches, so that's important that the crate move six inches and has to end within an inch of the same guy who moved it and can't come within an inch of an enemy model at any point. And that's really it. It's random game length as usual, so it's four to six rounds depending on whether we roll it off right away. And we're just going to start rolling. 
We first got to roll off to see who chooses deployment. I get a four, you get a two, so I choose, but I will also start placing objectives first. So the two deployment zones are these two rooms right here, and then these two rooms with the third room right there. And hmm, let me think about this for a second. I'm just going to choose this side right here, so Quirk will be deploying over there. But now we're going to go back and forth and place those four crates. They have to be five inches from each other and from any deployment zones. We ended up with the four objectives here, here, so both in the forward bridge area and then back in like the storage engine room area. Not quite sure exactly what they're all called. We roll off again and the loser starts deploying first and we go back and forth. So I'm the loser, so I start deploying first. To the first battle round, keeping track of our command points. I got three on my side and two on yours because I have a leader that gives me plus one, and my str strategist, my commander, and you have your leader as well. So we're both starting with that. Rolling for initiative. I win. And we both have a tactic that we have to use at the beginning of the movement phase. Is actually both of our commanders have the tactic, which lets everybody reroll ones within six inches. I am not going to use that tactic. Are you going to use that tactic? No, I am not. Yeah, not yet. In the movement phase, I'm going to have this voidsman stand still and open this door. And this voidsman will stand still and open this door. And this voidsman will stand still and open this door. Oh, we forgot to roll on the environmental table first, though. Three is engine coolant leak. All players must subtract one from their hit rolls in the shooting phase if the fire or the target is within six inches of either engine coolant station. In addition, treat all open ground within an inch as dangerous. So the engine coolant stations, I believe, are these two things. Ugh. I don't know about they like that. I think I would have chosen... No, I don't know what I would have chosen differently. Maybe put my shooter in the middle, but then that gives him less line of sight. Well, Voidsman Grell is just going to come out here and kind of take up a spot right here with his big old rotor cannon. I'm within six inches of them, but pretty much within six inches of them is like this entire room, so there's not going to be any way to avoid that minus one to hit. My other guys are just going to make sure they have line of sight, but I don't want to get too far forward yet. And Larsen van der Graus is going to stay there. Now I could, at the end of its move, his movement, Use the, spend a command point to use a tactic which is specific to the True Hawk in the Minister Arm Shrine to use this to open or close a door. And since he's a comm specialist, I could do D3 doors. Um, no, I'm not going to do that yet. Instead, my commander will move over here and open this door. Do I want to open the door? Yeah, yeah, you're not going to be able to charge me this turn. Well, I guess you could. No, you don't have. Because you'd have to open that one, you'd have to open that one, you don't have any comms panels, so we're good. I'm going to advance X million. Five. He'll have to go around, but it still gets him all the way up to here. Naso Prand is movement seven. We'll advance another two. I'll get her to here. And I'll advance my medic. Her name is Sanastasia. An inch! Bring her to here, and then advance this Voidsman five inches. And that'll bring him up to here. Hello. That is my movement. So now it is your movement. First thing we're going to do is have the Ice Singer Swarm. Uh, only infantry can open and close doors. Oh, I put them in the wrong order. Well, then swap it. If you meant to have yeah. somebody there to open the door for him. It's supposed to be that guy. Yeah. I just put them here to... Yeah, the only infantry can open and close doors. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, I just double checked it. Only infantry. Okay. So and the case, Ice Finger Swarm is a beast, not an infantry. My glitchling will open the door. Yeah. And that's his movement. The Thrice Cursed is going to advance. Five. Nine He's just going to bear off. He only moves four normally. Yeah. Which in small scale games like this is plenty for a guy that has a flamer and is terrifying. Over here, the glitchling that was properly placed will open the door. The herd. the herd! And big spike. 
the herd is going to run. Advance? Advance. Well, there's no charging, so you might as well. Yeah. Just won't be able to throw a grenade. You wouldn't be able to anyways. Now remember, an inch of this is dangerous and difficult terrain. Because dangerous is assumed to be difficult. I'm just going to go right here and stay an inch away from it. There we go. Get some obscured. Big spike, though, is going to run. Advance. Two. So six inches for that big guy. Look at him go. Two and then four. Staying away from the engine coolant leak. It's only on a one, you get a mortal wound. Yeah, you know, I'll get nice and close to Okay, it. go ahead. Right here. Roll the die. Not a one. You're good. Not a one. And you ignore it on a five plus on top of that. The ice stinger swarm is going to advance. Six. It moves 10, so that's going to be 16 inches. And it has fly, so you can't ignore the walls or the doors, but buzz, you can buzz. ignore. Buzz, 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 Finally, we have Ganasher Screamer going to advance. Oh, and a big shout out to Lee for painting these models. Did a great job, Lee. He Thank did you. A wonderful job, Lee. He worked very hard to do so. Just stand right here. It's a big time crunch to get him done in time. Next, we have shooting. You won't have any because he has a flamer, but he can't see anybody. And he has a grenade, but it, range. he also advanced technically, but he's not in range anyways. So I'll just fire all my guys, which will just essentially be all of them right here. Now, I have the rule with this guy because he's a comms guy, then in the shooting phase he can shoot something within six inches, which I have to measure around the walls to give him plus one to hit. So I'm going to use that on my heavy guy to make up for the minus one. So he'll just be back up to a three up, most likely four up because all your guys are going to be obscured. I'm going to spend a command point and use the heavy level one heavy tactic, more bullets to give him plus one to his shots, not plus one to hit. So his four shots become five shots. Bring it down to two. I'm having a hard time deciding who the target will be. I basically have a choice between these three. All of them are obscured, so I'm hitting them all in fours. So make this the plus shoot, shoot one. The I can't shoot the glitchling. Shoot the I can't see the glitchling. Even there, this thing blocks him. I want to fire at the Herg, because I can actually kill him, and that will give you one less model. It'll start doing, you know, as soon as somebody else has a flesh wound, then there's actual nerve tests to think about. But I don't want to throw five shots. These are strength four, minus two AP, two damage apiece. So they could actually take one of these guys down in one round. Now their toughness five, so we're looking at fives to wound them, whereas he's toughness four, so it's four. So it'd be fours and fours, and fours and fives. And I might just, if I'm lucky, take a couple wounds off of one of those, and that's it. But maybe that's just okay. You know what? Nasher Screamer is your leader. It's good Nasher. It's good Nasher. Sorry, the G is not silent in this one. So I think I'll, I'll take some shots at him. If I get super lucky, I'll be happy to take two wounds off of him. Hitting on fours. Ooh, okay. I like to think that that was one of the original four, not the extra one I paid a command point for. Now the dice were a little zealous there because I didn't need sixes, I needed fours. Now I need fives. So if now I can see all those dancing Matthews, that would be great. Well, you know what? I'm happy with two wounds. Your armor is only a six up, so the minus two just ignores it. So that's four damage in total, but you ignore wounds on a five plus with disgustingly resilient. What? What? Quirk? No, no, not again. Well, I'm going to put the combat shotgun into somebody. You're all more than six inches away, so it's going to be long range. You're all obscured. Even there, that wall would obscure him a bit. So he'll put his combat shotgun into the Herg. You can be hit on sixes. He's normally threes to hit. You're obscured, so that's fours. There's engine coolant leaks, so that's fives. And you're at long range, so that's sixes. And we'll rapid fire the last gun into Herg as well. Same thing, sixes. Although I guess I can see him pretty clearly, so it could be fives, but I'd rather just take my chances. See, one hit on the Herg, wounding one on fives. That's all my shots. That was a great disappointment. Four or five up, Disgusting Resilience. Before anybody complains, Disgusting Resilience is too good. That was just a really good roll. So you, even if just two of those got through, I would have been happy. I am anti-Disgusting Resilient, and even that was like... That was, yes, well, of course, because that was four wounds. That's how many wounds you have. Yeah, I could have died. So if you didn't I have Disgusting died. Resilient, right there, I would have rolled two dice for injury. And you could have actually had a 75% chance of just losing your leader on the first shot. That would have been a big deal. But... That's not what happened. So we go into the morale phase because there's no combat and there's no morale to be had because nobody's flesh wounded or uh, destroyed. So we're just gonna go into round two. Rolling for initiative. I got a six. You also got a six, so we'll re-roll. 
I got an eight, and you got a five, so I have initiative. Oh, right, we also get command points back. I go up three, you go up two, so five and four. Now at this point we have our commander tactics. Not because they're commanders, just that they both happen to have this tactic, which is you can spend a, ta a command point and everybody gets three roll ones within six inches. Would you like to use yours? Actually, I'll, I gotta decide mine first. I, yeah, I will, I'll use mine, so. Boom. What about you? I will not. You will not. Okay. Well, I'm going to get more cowardly. I'm going to move back here. We're going to move back here. And even move right to here. My veteran is going to come back to here. Hey! 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 Maximilian will take up a spot right here. Nassau Prand. My voidsman. My commander and my medic. So we're all on the bridge now. And I'm going to purposely not move Larsen Vandergross. And that's going to be my movement, I'm ashamed to say, because not doing enough damage to you, I can't quite take the offensive yet. So your turn. Well, starting off, we're going to have Thrice Cursed charge... My poor veteran that I put there as bait. Yes. Uh, you, of course you know that, but... What are you gonna do but kill him? Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna retreat. Oh. Nope, I cannot. I moved. So I will overwatch. So I will throw a concussion grenade at you. So it's D3 shots. Three. Each of these hits on a six. One hit. Now, because you're within one inch of terrain, the wall, it actually gets plus one strength and damage. Now, the strength doesn't matter. We go from three to four, your toughness five, but it becomes damage two. So fives to wound. Oh, I don't think I'm going to re-roll that. No, yes, no, no, because you'll have a six-up save and then you'll be ignoring wounds on a five plus. So worth a re-roll for a one in three chance? No, not yet. What is your charge distance? Looks like you're making like a four. Nah, you're good. Burr. Yeah. Oh, I'm so dead. But maybe I won't be. But at the very least, I slowed him down. Gonna have the... Nasher Screamer? Yeah. Let's have him go first. He's gonna the butcher. He's going to advance. Oh, he's brave like that. An inch. Oh, so five oh, inches. I needed to go further than that. Eh, boom, I can, I can boom, that. boom. He's five is good enough. Burn it. Burn it, big guy. Big spike. Also going to advance. How far? Three inches. Now, just before you move, yes. you might as well roll your dangerous train. He's fine. So he's going to move seven inches. But it's also da uh, difficult terrain, so I have to reduce. Oh, it. that's right. Each inch that you move while you're within an inch of it. Yep. So two. So that's that's I'm four. Gonna, I'm going to back up one inch, so it's going to cost me so two of them. Two inches. And then I have five more. Oh, this is terrifying. I can't take down two of them before you get there. The herg. The herg is going to. I'm still an inch away, so I'm going to go. It's going to stay there. And then. Oh, dangerous train. I know. Three, four, right there. Let's grab that one. You're fine. Glitchling number one, gonna advance. Ooh. Ooh, he's fast. How yeah. fast does he normally move? Six? Five. Oh, just five. five. Well, I guess it's fast for Nurgle stuff. So, oop, and then 10 inches forward. We're gonna go. Ay, ay, ay. And then this glitchling is going to just go right here and stand by the door. I'm not gonna open it. Not gonna open it? Okay. We go now into the shooting phase where you won't have any shooting once again because you're one guy that can kind of shoot is has charged and you can't fire flavor in combat anyways and when you charge you can't fire pistols that's one thing that we made a mistake in some of our previous games so all my guys are just going to shoot i'm going to focus on your leader i believe i'm going to use larsen van der graus to give my and i'm just within six inches to give him plus one to hit and i will once again use the heavy tactic which brings me down to three command points to get the plus one shot and so I'm basically the three plus because it was down to a two plus because of the plus one, three plus because of the engine coolant leak, and four plus because you are obscured. So that's nice, hitting on fours with five shots. Golly, that was pretty crappy. Oh, gee willikers. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna reroll any of that because I've been burning through command points. I need fives to wound. Well, I got one. So it's two damage, so you can ignore those in fives. Goodness, even just making one of those is frustrating because now you've made five out of six. So it brings him down to three. I'm going to put a combat shotgun or whatever it's called 
It is an art artificer shotgun. So he's at the half range. He'll have the extra strength, which makes... Is it extra strength? Yeah, so it'll be strength 5 at least. But you are obscured and the engine coolant leak, so 5's to hit. Oh, we got a hit, and then 4's to wound because it's strength 5. I'm re-rolling that with a command point tactic thing. Oh, come on, that was 2 damage. And I will throw a concussive grenade. No, you're not within an inch of any terrain, so it'll only be strength 3 AP or 1 damage. So I will fire last guns. And I will rapid fire at the Herg. You leave. I'm not leaving the Herg alone. So threes obscured as fours and fives because of the coolant leak. But you're not at long range, so one hit, winning on a five. No. I'll put my voltaic pistol into the big guy. Not more than six inches away, but he's only blizzard skill four plus. So this becomes five plus, and you're not obscured, so five plus. Oh, okay. If it was a six, it would have been. Three hits, but it's strength five, so forced wound. Oh, there's a wound. No AP, so you get your six up save. Will you stop it, man? This is not fair. The engine coolant leak thing first, and then you're just making every stupid save? Well, that's all my shooting, so let's go to the combat phase. Chargers go first, unless I want to spend two command points for him to go, but I don't. Four attacks with the, uh, let's, yeah, I think it's just the claw. The claw. the claw! Hitting on threes? Yeah. Yeah, I'm dead. Oh! Okay! You reroll ones. No, no, you didn't use your ability. I didn't use my ability. Okay. And then strength bajillion, so two's to wound. Okay, and I'm assuming it's gonna Minus ignore... Minus two, two damage. Minus two, two damage. So just go straight to the two damage, because I'm not close enough, because I'm not within six inches to get the invuln. So you're just rolling damage. Yeah, dead. Four plus is dead. Gone. And then you can consolidate towards the nearest enemy? I don't know if that would be him or if that would be towards He's going to stay put. He's going to stay put? Yeah. All right. Into the morale phase, I don't have to test if I'm broken. I've lost one guy out of, like, ten. Four. Yeah, ten. So I'd have to lose six before there's any chance of being broken. Nobody has any flesh wounds on him. So now we're going to roll initiative. After getting more command points, you're up to... What was I down to two? So I'm up to five. You went up to six because you haven't been using yours. So let's roll initiative. Six. Six. Mm, I need this one. Ten. No. no. All right, I got initiative. This boy's been declaring a charge against both of these guys. And you know what? Against the glitchlings as well. Ooh. Nine inches. It's going to charge, avoiding the dangerous terrain, right to here. Uh. I am going to spend a command point to access this panel with my comm specialist, which lets me open and close D3 doors because it's comms. So two. I'm going to use that to close this door and attempt to open this door. Now, did you want to use your... Uh, yes. How many command points is it? Tell me it's two. It's one. Ah, so he has, a, he has a tactic for the glitchlings that if they're the ones that are within an inch, then he gets a plus three to the roll-off to see who decides if it opens or closes. So essentially I have to roll five or six. No. So you can roll a one. Oh, wait. We would re-roll ties. Okay. So roll... Okay. So you win. Do you want an opening? No. Okay. Yeah, this poison is going to stand right here. My medic is going to stand right here. Now, so Pranda is going to stand right here. And my leader is going to stand. Oh, we didn't declare whether we're going to use our reroll one bubbles. I'm not going to use mine. Mm. So we should have been at the beginning of the movement phase, but since we both can do it, we might as well just do it like that. And Aximilian will just move over to here for now. And that is my movement. Golly. And this is battle round three. We're heading towards a stalemate here. This keeps going. You're gonna have those two, and I'll have these two. We'll, we'll see what you do. Well, I'm gonna start right here, and we're gonna run. So advance. Yes. Go. Where are you going? Oh, you got me trapped. So I'm gonna have to take a little bit of damage doing this, but so that's gonna be a nine-inch move, which means I can go four. But this is dangerous. This is yeah, dangerous. So, so you're losing three half. inches. So you can basically plop them on the other side of that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Got. But. So dangerous train on a one, you're fine. The Herg is gonna move. On a one, dangerous. Oh. Uh-oh. Now he's disgustingly resilient and, oh, okay, you failed it. How many wounds does he have? One. He only has the one. Okay, so you actually roll this injury roll, which means you could re-roll it, because I didn't do the damage to you. So would you like to use a command yeah. point to re-roll that? So yeah. you're down to four. Oh, the Herg is gone! The Herg, no! Not the Herg! 
All right. Well, let's have thrice cursed advance. Now, if you advance, you can't open doors. That's fine. Okay. Just want to remind you of that. Going ten, but I only really need to get right. Yeah. Go ahead. Open the door. Open the door. <laughs> I dare you. I, I dare you. And then you got a glitch lane and an eye stinger swarm. The eye stinger swarm. I'm gonna charge. Where? Uh, oh, him. Yeah. You got him. You, you got lead. fly, so you can pass over him. And then the glitch lane. Just gonna stay where he is. Okay. Keep holding that door. He's just holding on to the button. He's playing at the cords in the console. No, he's got it open. He's just got it open. And he's like, he shoved one wire into his head, another one into his butt, and somehow that is keeping the door closed. <laughs> into the shooting phase. Once again, you don't have any shooting. He could fire his flamer even after advancing. He just doesn't have any targets. So I will have all three of these guys fire at him. Once again, putting the plus one into him. You're not obscured, thankfully. And I will once again use this tactic to fire five times. So I'm down to three. So I would be hit on twos except for the coolant leak, which has screwed me over, but just screwed you over, so maybe we're even now. Because I did hit you a lot. You've just been making lots of disgusting resilience. So hitting you on threes, thanks to the coolant leak. Oh, failed one because of that. And then looking for fives to wound, strength four versus toughness five. Only one. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll keep it. Disgusting and resilient. Yeah, I am. Ah. Yeah, I am. This is impossible. Our Tipiser shotgun. He'll be hitting on fours, because there was no bonus. Oh, both hit. This is strength five at this range. We're looking at fours to wound. There we go. Both two damage, no AP though. Six up saves, please don't. Thank you. Oh. That's four damage in total then. Oh, please. I hate disgusting resilience. You passed two of them. You passed pass two, two of them. them. Uh, well, you know what? I, okay, and then the Voltaic pistol. So we're going to be hitting on fives here. No. That is all the shooting. So now we are going to go to the combat phase, where chargers go first. And starting with me, because I have initiative, so that would be him. Now you can attack anybody who you charged or who charged you. So I could actually redirect my attacks to the glitch lane or to the eye stinger swarm. Definitely going to want to do one of those. And I changed my mind. It has a rule that you get minus one to hit it, so I'm going to attack the glitch lane instead. So I'll be hitting it on fours. Well, I guess I could hit the Ice Stinger Swarm. Threes to wound, though, because the only toughness two. Um, let's re-roll that. I'm pretty desperate here. Okay, that's a waste <laughs> again. So then you have your charger, which is the Ice Stinger Swarm. Yeah. But if you want to, you can just go straight to the big guy, because he will probably one-shot him, and it doesn't make a difference for anything, really. Hey, I'm just going to jump to the uh, Ganasher. Using the Plague Cleaver, so I can re-roll Wound rolls of one. So you're hitting on fours or threes? Fours. Fours? Ugh. Though not hit rolls of one, it's wound rolls. Threes to wound? Yeah. Straight five. Reroll ones. Okay. These are minus what? Minus two, two damage apiece. Okay, so roll two injury rolls. Oh, hold on, let me check if I have an invuln. I don't think so. Now, if I had charged right here, I'd have an invuln. So, two injury rolls. Ha! And he is dead, as expected. Want to consolidate? Yes, please. So, dangerous uh, terrain. Okay. But I would have slowed you down, too. Oh, right. No mortal wound. That's the end of round three. So now we're going into battle round four, which could be the last round. It has a two in three chance of not being. It has a one in three chance of being the last round. We both get our command points. Neither of us has lost any of our leadership capabilities. So you went up to six, I went back up to five with my plus three. And <laughs> this has been a crazy game because uh, I just keep feeding you guys so that you don't kill all of my guys because these stupid glitch lanes are keeping the door shut. So let's roll initiative. Six. Seven. Yes! You got initiative. Starting right off with Big Spike, charging both. Help both Overwatch. Okay, so we're overwatching. I got a lot of chances here to do some damage. So I just need a six somewhere. So we're gonna start with my heavy with his rotor cannon. There's a lot of dice. If I were you, I'd be nervous. No sixes. But I'm feeling pretty nervous too. No sixes. Sixes to hit. No sixes. No. Yes, we got a six. Oh, did you want to do your thing for rerolling ones? Oh, right, that's over here. Oh. Okay. So no. 
Okay. No, yes, no, yes. You know what? You have initiative. You choose first. No. Um, I don't know. I don't know why that would have made a difference. <laughs> like, um, it seems like a waste. I know you can open the door and then start to walk in. But. Yeah, you know what? I will. I will. I will. That'll make me a little more defensive in this area, which I need to hold. But it doesn't help me over here. Strength four, toughness five. So we need a five plus. <laughs> oh, we got it! No rerolls required! Ah. Two damage! Just to be clear, you only have one wound left. You have to make both of these five up for Disgusting Resilience, otherwise you will suffer the consequences. Oh. You can't reroll Disgusting no. Resilient. So that's two injury rolls. And I haven't used any rerolls yet. Oh. Taking it, he's out. Oh, he's out! <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> doing it again. <laughs> I know you are, and I'm doing it again too. Oh, you have no idea. Oh my goodness, that was terrifying. I know you're very disappointed right now, but I, I was terrified. Oh, why are we in blue pants? Why are we not in brown pants? So you're gonna charge them both? Yes. Okay, I'll overwatch with both. I could retreat with both. No, that's not, I don't have far, if, if I could go like directly back. <laughs> Jump into the void, it's totally worth it. No, we're overwatching. Ah! Starting with my heavy guy again. But you got three wounds now. Yeah. So I've actually got to get a couple of these through. Uh, no sixes. Sixes to hit. No sixes. I haven't used my reroll yet. No sixes. No sixes. I'm not going to use a reroll or I'm hoping for a six. I do have the shotgun. The shotgun could take you out. They are two damage. The artificer shotgun at this range will be strength five. Two damage, but no AP. So you'll get your six ups and five ups, which is terrifying to me. And I need to roll double six to take you out. Six is to hit. Oh, oh, oh. so close. Oh. Oh, so close. Oh. I can still hurt you. Four is to wound. No. I'm rerolling it. No. No. Oh. <laughs> Why do all my rerolls not help? Okay. Don't roll low and you're fine. <laughs> yeah, you're good. So you are in dangerous terrain, so I'll roll one really quick for me. Just roll a one. No, I said. You, oh, you said. I, thought, I said roll a one. So oh, you can take I, I a heard roll one for me. No, I said roll a one. I was being very specific in my request. <laughs> are you gonna charge both of them? Yep. Of course you are. I stinger swarm. Buzz, 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 buzz. Can't buzz, move buzz. the objectives, but it can still hold them. Buzz. It's just whoever has the most models. Uh, going to advance my little glitchling here. That's far enough. Oh, seven inches. <laughs> Stay away from the dangerous terrain. Yes. This glitchling is going to open the door. Bring it, man. And what's he going to do? Charge! Who's he declaring his charge? Now, I can't see him, but remember, there is the point blank overwatch. Yes. Where I could fire at you once you come around the corner. Just I'm going with one to guy, though. Charge. Aximilian? The bestest boy in the universe. And your sword wielding. Okay. Person. Yeah. I'm not going to overwatch. I'm not going to use a command point for that. Oh no! I'm gonna use the command point. Yeah, you got that. you got lots of them. Right, yeah. Reroll that. Reroll that. Reroll that. Double one again. Five. Well, you're not getting to her, but you can go after Aximilian. Uh, bark. Woof. Woof. Fatal mistake there. I should have reacted and moved him back because I haven't moved yet. Because now it's my movement phase. Because you would have failed that charge, and that would have been awesome. Let's go for broke. Nasopran is going to charge. We're going to clear both of them. Five inches. I'm gonna bring her to get both of them. Hello. Voidsman will charge both of them. Uh, I need to re-roll that because I need to grab that objective. Well, I guess the, no. I need I need to grab that objective. So five inches. So then I can charge to here and have that objective. And my commander will charge just the big guy. Hmm. Oh, okay. Five. We're good. We're good. Whew. And we'll leave my medic. Who will move to here? Coward. And do I have to spend a command point to drag it? Nope. No, that's just a thing. I'm just gonna drag this over here. It's, it's mine, not yours. Uh, Larson is gonna come up to here. Make sure to stay within six inches and get clear line of sight to your glitchling. End of the shooting phase. The only shooting I can see is just him. Everybody else is we're charged or charged, or doesn't have a target. Do you agree? I agree. Okay, so firing at both of them. I get minus one to hit that one, and minus one to hit the glitchling. The glitchling gets minus one to shooting, and I get the minus one from the obscure. So I'm hit on sixes no matter which one I shoot at, so I might as well shoot at the one that's easier to kill. So sixes to hit, because I'm four plus normally. Oh, I can give myself five plus. 
So I, I'm gonna give myself the plus one, so five plus. Oh, oh. thank goodness for that ability. Uh, two's to wound, it's strength five. Yeah, good thing it's un- yeah, anyway. Woohoo! Okay, I haven't reused my reroll in this phase yet, unless it's Roll burning. another one, roll another one. Okay, that's the first reroll that did something. You do not have a save, you don't have disgusting resilience, so we go straight. The problem is I, I wanted to use the reroll here. You ignore flesh wounds, but you get a plus one as well, so three plus you're out. Yep. Okay, good. Ice Stinger Swarm is gone. I was worried I wanted to keep the reroll for that. Because, yeah. Into combat, we start the chargers, which we've got quite a few of, but you have initiative, so you get to choose one of your chargers first. Who would you like to go first? Ooh. Let's have this charger go first. Now I can declare anybody I've also, who I've been charged by, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll be able to attack anybody around you. Okay. So, uh, how would you like to divide your attacks? Three and one. Oh, try to get me off the objective. Yes. Which one first? We'll do the three attacks going into your... Commander? Yeah. Hit on threes. Two hits. Wounded on twos. Give me a one. There's the one oh. I was looking for. Reroll. You're only going to get one reroll for the entire phase. Just a reminder. Okay. okay. She's got a four up in Vuln. Yes! I haven't used my reroll for this phase yet. Oh, that's right. So I will use my last command point. And yes! not keep her alive. That's all of her wounds, because those are two damage apiece, right? Yes, they are. So two injury rolls. And with no surprise, my commander is dead. That sucks, because I just lost my reroll one bubble. One attack against the Voidsman, hit on a three. Three. Good. Oh, you get to reroll ones. No, you didn't use your I didn't use, you didn't use your tactic. So then I get to do one of my chargers. Which would be one of these two. It doesn't really matter at this point, because all chargers go first and there's no way for us to interrupt each other. I think I wanted to kill your Glitchling, because that puts you to the point where you might break. Maybe. It's not likely you'll break, but if you did and anybody gets... Yeah. Yeah, because I'm out of command points. If I had a few command points, I think I'd go for him, because she has a, a trait, killing strikes for two command points, a mixer dam weapon D3 damage instead of just one. So I'm going to attack the Glitchling. Looking for threes to hit. Okay, they all hit. Twos to wound. This should kill him. Okay, you gotta make five disgustingly resilient rolls. Don't you dare. Yeah, one failed. Injury yeah. check. Hey, we got it. We didn't even just oh, flush wound him. He's actually dead. Nasher Screamer, how does he want to divide his attacks? Two and two. Two and two? Yeah. Which one first? Go into your heavy gun. Okay, four is to hit. One hit. And you're out of rerolls. I know. Two's to wound. Oh, I get a five up invol, thanks to. Uh, Graus, Larsen van der Graus. Don't you dare. Oh, so cool. What do you mean, don't I dare? <laughs> Mister, I make all my five pluses, at least at the beginning. You haven't been doing it really. Anyway. So that's two damage, so that's two injury checks. Gotcha. And he's dead. Yikes. And then the other two attacks. Hitting on fours. Ugh, twos to wound. No, threes to wound. Were we saying twos before? Uh, I, mean, I think yeah. we were, but it didn't matter. I think he rolled high. Well, your so, up is three, right? Yeah, we are strength five. Yeah, strength five. Over here we were doing it a two. Yeah, I can't remember. That's great. Either way, it doesn't matter. So you got through. Yep. Still have my five up in Vuln, otherwise it's two damage. No! Oh, again! Why can't I make five ups? Flesh wound! No, he just slaughtered both of them. Oh, that puts you at half. Uh, yeah, I have to lose one more. You've killed my leader and my strategist, so I'm only going to begin one command point. So, you know, let's take some pot shots against this big ugly guy. Start with Aximilian. Two attacks, hitting on threes, okay. And then I got my little Voidsman, one attack, hitting on four. Okay, look, I really would have liked those reroll ones. To the morale phase, we gotta check if somebody's broken. You've lost four out of seven? Yes. So you actually have to test. What is your highest leadership? My highest leadership is Probably nine. nine, yeah. Okay, so leadership nine. There's no rerolls here. Oh, you're broken! Which means every single one of your guys has to take a nerve test, and you've got four guys out, so it'll be at plus four. So we're going to start with this little guy over here. Oh, you want to start with him? No, hold on. Just be careful because he'll be a lower leadership. Mm -hmm. Does it add to... Yes. Oh, if he shakes, start here. Start he'll here. get a plus one. Start here. He, you, you add the number of guys who are out or who are shaken. Okay. And so if you go with him first, he might get shaken. Then you go to the next guy, that's another plus one. Gotcha. So we're going to start here then. So you got a plus four. His leadership is nine. nine. So you need to roll six for him to shake. <sighs> now, just so you know, you can spend a command point and automatically pass it. Oh, okay. So who do you like to do next? Right here. 
Okay, now he's leadership eight, eight yes. so he has to roll five plus to fail it. Okay, you can spend a command point and re-roll that. Yep, yep, doing that. But you can't spend a command point to pass it now for him. It's before you make the roll. You're yes. good. And then you have your Klitschling. Passing. Oh. You're passing automatically because yep. you wanted to hold the objective. Yes. Shaken models cannot do anything, including holding objectives. I was going to battle round four. Battle round four. So right now I'm winning. I've got two objectives and you've only got one. So if the game ends here, I win. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do the roll? Mm -mm. doesn't matter because you don't get to re-roll it. You don't want to. Mm -mm. So three plus, the game continues. Oh, oh, it danced around those ones and twos. Oh. All right, so you still have a chance. Let's go into battle round five. I get one command point and you get two. Ooh, initiative's going to be important here, I think. Seven. Hey, you've got initiative. Did you want to use your tactic to reroll ones? Yes, I uh, do. Okay, I don't have that opportunity anymore. Going to charge ya. I will retreat to here. How far is your charge? Mm. Yeah, as long as you go like this. If you tried to go through the dangerous train, then yeah, you make it. I can only hold one objective at a time, right? Yeah. Okay, we're just going to go back here then. Hide in the corner. Sorry, I double-checked that. I assumed that. It doesn't say that anywhere. Okay. So you could drag that one over I'm there and hold both of them. It. Drag, and now you're holding both objectives with right. one stupid little glitching. And meh, there. Well, you can't do both of them. You no. have to start within an inch to move Oh, it. right. Okay. That's all your moving? That is all of my moving. Okay, my turn. Well, I am going to fall back. Hold that objective. Right now we're looking at best as a tie, which is kind of annoying. I have no easy way to kill your leader. Fall back. If I fall back everybody, then you can fire your flamer. So I gotta leave somebody there to be sacrificed to the thrice cursed god. Is it the puppy? It's good. Yeah, because I can move seven, I can actually contest, I believe. Sorry, I gotta go seven inches directly to this one. Enter. No, no. Ah! I measured it. Hold on. I was eight and a half inches away from the center, so I can skirt it over to here, get within two inches of that one, and contest it. Can't hold on to two objectives with one glitchling. A little glitchling. I tried. I know. Oh, I tried. And she's going to drag this one to this corner and whimper. <laughs> uh, shooting phase. The only one that could shoot would be her. There's no target. So combat phase, we start with chargers, which would be the guy there. Ganasher. This is where I'll roll all the five up in Vons. Yeah. Please. Four is to hit. Okay. And threes to wound. Hmm. Can it end how it began? You rolled four fives. Can I roll two fives? Oh, so close. So two damage, so two injury checks. And dead. Consolidate. Are you going to get within an inch of her? Yep. So she'll be able to fight you then. That's fine. Then the non-chargers, starting with you. So you can kill my puppy. You puppy killer. You are a puppy killer, Quirk. How does that make you feel? Threes and twos. And just two injury checks right away. You are a puppy killer. Consolidate. Yeah. yeah I don't think you have to measure that, man. Just move on over. <laughs> so now you're contesting that objective. So right now we're at a draw, unless some of our guys get shaken, because you're broke. Oh, frick, you're at minus one to hit, because your kill team is broken. Oh. I don't know if that would have made a difference, but we're not going to go back. Okay. Okay. Like, I think there was one less hit, but let's face it, you overkilled both of those. Although you only got, it might have made a difference, but we're just going to live with it and move on. Okay? okay? So you're at minus one to hit. Remember that for okay. if we go to the round six. Uh, so I'll get to fight you. She could take you down. Mm -hmm. Threes to hit. Yeah, I'm not broken. Look at that. Fives to wound, though. I'm strength four. Well, one. Just one damage. Five up to ignore it. Oh. No. So he's down to two wounds. So now we test if we're broken. Oh, I... Oh. Yeah. Okay. Didn't hurt him. What a surprise. Now we test if we're broken. Uh, you were already broken, so you remain broken, but I got a test now with my highest leadership. Remembering that anybody close to these guys is minus one leadership. My highest leadership is leadership seven. I am not broken, which means I am not going to be shaken. But you have to test to see if you are shaken. Who's going to test first? Right here. Big guy, you need to roll a six to fail it. 
Wait. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Who's next? Here. Next big guy, you need to roll five to fail it. He does it again. You want to spend a command point to reroll? Um, he's. If we go to turn six, it'll matter. Right now, he's yeah. not contesting or doing anything. I will spend a command point. Reroll, don't get a five or six. Yes, he is. He's broken. And then for your glitch lane, auto pass. You're going to use a command point to auto pass. It's a separate tactic. So we're tied right now. So now I actually wanted to go to the next turn because if she kills him and then consolidates, then. Uh, and the glitch lane kills you. Yeah, I think I got two wounds on her. Yeah, two wounds. You're not killing her with the glitch lane. Because he can't do anything because he's shaken. Mm -hmm. So there's a chance. Over here is a problem, obviously. Well, let's see if we, I don't know why I'm trying to talk it out. Four plus, the game goes to turn six. No, so it's a tie. It's a close game, though. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, there's no tiebreaker. The tiebreaker is whoever has a lower force. I technically have the lower force. It's 145 points, but that doesn't really seem like enough to really call it the lower force. That's, I just brought what I had, and you made you could make 150 points. That was close. That was close. I had to play dirty as much as I could, but that was darn close. What do you think? I enjoyed it. It wouldn't have been as close if you didn't make all those five ups right at the beginning. Can you imagine just being a couple wounds could lower? Because it's fail him. All he's, of them? he's at two wounds. Yeah, because you imagine if I fail all of them and he just died. Well, if you, failing all of them wasn't likely, but failing two or three of them. Yeah. So if he had just failed two of them, then he'd be out of wounds now, mm -hmm. and he'd either he could just be flush wounded, of course. But you can bet that I would have spent command points to re-roll that entry check. Yeah. So whereas your leader is, he's perfectly fine. So yeah, that was close. So that is the first mission that we're playing. Then we're going to play another mission. We're going to flip over the table, flip over this board, and play in the shrine, and play the match play mission for that one, the first one in the book. That'll be in the mini Wargaming Vault at the link below. So go ahead and click that. If you're not a Vault member, you can still click it, get a free seven-day trial, get instant access to that Rogue Trader Kill Team Battle Report, as well as thousands of other battle reports and campaigns and all sorts of fun stuff. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the Vault.